Evening everyone, um, I'm here in Liverpool Street Station, uh, it's not really evening, it's morning, I've just been travelling on Thameslink and, uh, and Thameslink 2. Uh, behind me are two, two rather fetching trains, um, because, uh, in fact, here's, here's one, here is Depang. I'm not here alone though, because with me is, is Simon. Simon is here, hello. Hi. And together we're going to be asking the question whether this train that's currently running off behind us, whether this train is, is and indeed the family of trains, the Fleur, do Stadler build the best trains in the UK? We're, we're going to find out, right, in GB really. This train, uh, we're waiting, they're very long these trains because we're waiting for the nose to go, there's the electric, and there we have it. Welcome to tonight's Rail Matter. <laughs> And as the Intercity 225 fades away, there's Simon and I on, on the platform still. Yeah, we're just watching it. It's one of the one of the Electro Stars pulling out behind us. Uh, very different train. We're going to be riding on one of those later. I travel on IETs a lot, so I can also make comparisons with IET. Yeah, there it goes. Look, it's an Electro Star. Um, just to wind Bombardier up. Yeah, no, look, there's, there's a stand next to us. Also, while we're in here, um, while si Simon is not here representing his employer, however, look at this, this, it's a stunning station. You can see what it looks like when they've actually cleaned the roof and replaced the, the with, with self-cleaning glass panels. There are no diesel trains in here. Replace this bit with the shiny too, because it'll look glorious. I, I think it, it'll look nicer if there's lots of fresh light coming in here. Anyway, we digress. Right, we're doing it. We're getting. We're actually getting onto a train. There's, there's a train. We're getting onto this train. Simon is. In fact, he's he's he's, he's next to me. He's, he's here. Um, where are we going today? Do we have a plan? Uh, no. <laughs> we don't have a plan at all. We're, we're going to get onto a train. We're going to bash the. We're going to get on a train somewhere else. What's good to know is that the BTP are now tracking us. Uh, because we're going to go somewhere and then leave there immediately. We're now on a naughty list. That's good. Do you see that news article? No. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about that later, everyone. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, it might have already been, in fact, it was probably on whatever, whenever I did the news. I have no idea when this episode's going out, by the way. Um, what is the date? I don't have a date on my watch. Sometime so. in August. Sometime in August. It'll go out sometime later in August, possibly when I'm off on holiday later this month. Right. Um, where, should we, where should we hop on? Look, we're looking at this, this um, train there, they're preparing it. So it's, it's quite a long, nice inside. We're going to get in. It's a very long train. It is. Um, so, I think what we'll do, we'll head towards, we'll head towards the front. In fact, what we can do is we'll go because basically what these trains are, these twelve car ones anyway. There's two types. Uh, there's ten for the Norwiches. They have a buffet, uh, first class area, and then there's tens, ten uh, sets for the Stansteads, which have a bit more luggage space and don't have the cafe bit or the first class because plebs in Essex. I love Essex. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so what they've done is they've bolted two six car trains back to back, which you can see here and I was gonna say that's what we're about to go past right uh, so yes this here is is as, as we pass this weird this section weird bit without stuff what's actually in that connector well we're we, gonna have a look in a minute in fact, we, why, why don't we hop on here at now yeah, anyway let's and do doing it let's this important thing so level level boarding so there we go just walk effortlessly walking. I'm just going to go back and forth a few times. Oh, oh, and then I don't even have to stay, lift up. It's great. Makes my life easier, but more importantly, makes a lot of other people's lives easier. Then here's the, the compromise is that then there's a ramp. Saying, Gareth, is oh. it, have, you have, it has a European feel. It looks European it on, does. on the outside. It also looks European on the inside because you can't, maybe you won't see it in the video very well. I'm standing, I'm not this much taller than Gareth. Gareth and I are basically the same height, but um, I'm, I'm basically standing on the bogey. But the cool thing is, there are still table seats, there's a walkway, and you can just, and it's not just about wheelchairs, I'm thinking about my elderly parents, they're in the 70s, they can easily... And just shuffle along. And, and the whole the there. whole vehicle, so the whole, no, let's, because we can't hear Simon, let's keep going this way. I've not actually talked about, we've not talked about much about this train, the difference between these and, and commercial trains. This is a, like one of the few types of train in the UK, in GB, that has Jacobs bogies, which I'll explain 
in a brief cutaway now. I hope you enjoyed that brief cutaway. Anyway, the joy of editing. Yeah, look, here we are. This is, this is, this is the ganglia connection, which is so fine. Basically, where the two units are just bolted back to back to make one big unit, really. Um, on, on the Eurostar trains, they call them different numbers because they're weird, but here it's just like, it is just one train. Um, this is it's where very I'm long. There's it a, is. There's a, I presume not the end of the train over there. It's possibly no, just the, the universal true. access toilet yes. that way. And, but you can see much further the other way. It does have a European train feel to it. I was saying this earlier, but not on camera, which we'll talk about momentarily when we actually talk about this train. But um, it just has a European feel to it. Externally, it looks like a European train. Uh, in part because it is a European, it's, it's a European train coming over Can here. Can you get more than European than Switzerland? Like this is right in the middle. Yeah, no, well, yes and no, I suppose. Yeah, um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're lots of things that we like. We'll talk about, we'll do lots of summarising things we like about these, these trains and why I, I'm going to continue to make the case as to working out whether I, I'm biased because the level boarding means they're winning, they're already winning off the bat. But the idea that they're, um, like, there are other factors of, the, of these trains I think is really good. I think they're better than any other train running. So this is a long distance one. We're going to try a long distance one and we're also then going to have a little trial on a kind of a more local, regional sort yeah, of Yeah, so on that one we'll be standing one. in in, um, in what, what some people lovingly call, oh I love it, the thrash cupboard. Which is kind of <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. but it's not. There's no thrash here. It's electric. Um, it's electric, as train should be. PSA everyone, uh, if you are in one of these, or indeed the regional ones that have the thrash cupboard in them, these are not toilets or cloakrooms. Uh, this is full of electrical stuff. Um, there was a lady, I think Bessie, said on one of her trains when she was still working with Greater Anglia, the lovely Bessie, who's now a Freightliner, Freight is great, um, she was uh, found someone trying to kind of get into one of these who thought it was a loo. Oh, don't no, do that. No. You, you, no, don't do it. Right, let's go and sit down because we might, I don't even know, we might have left. I don't even know because no, we're... No, no, I don't think so. We've got another, we've, this thing's leaving in not that many minutes. Three. Three minutes. It's, it looks quite empty. Everyone got, so let's, let's cancel trains this morning Good and job. everyone's got on the... Uh, I'm not sure about this though. You're not convinced so by. Drop I just, I think, I do. There, there are some that are Ian Walmsley of the Modern Railways uh, of publication. Hi Phil. Um, it, it, he's very against the tip-up seats in the doorways, and I think on a train like this, which has got, as you'll see shortly as we walk through, it's, it's like oodles of seats. And what I should have done is I should have googled that beforehand, but I didn't. Uh, oh, yeah, we should have worked out exactly how many seats there are. There are loads. At that post, <laughs> there'll be a ping and an orange bit of text at the bottom. Excellent. Um, do you really need these extra ones? Now that might be that might be because of if you remember pre-COVID. I mean, I can't. It's all a blur. Um, if you remember in those days when it was all like, oh, you'll win your train uh, bids by bidding as many seats as possible. These are literally probably here to bump over a certain seat threshold. Exactly. Yeah, that, would have, that would prove what was called the quality of the bid instead of just running a train that is designed with passengers in mind. Yeah. Take as much away from the DFT as possible. Um, let's, uh, let's go and find a seat, let's go and get, oh, bang bang, let's, uh, let's go and get a comfy seat and find a, in fact these all look very comfy. They also have really nice big wide, they I mean they've got, they've got these weird, we'll do a proper walk through while it's moving, but uh, let's, let's go and find a comfy seat shall we Simon. Right, it's like an office room there except we're on a train. Here's the first. We've done no, no, because Tim and I have Tim and I have done did a bit of rail mattering when we went when we were uh, at um, Warrington. I did the Warrington episode, but this is this is the first one that will be like almost a bit of a conversational rail matter, but on a train. This is the authentic rail matter experience. Hello, everyone. Yeah, this is it. It's exciting. We're going through. We're, we're, so, what we have to look out for now is Bishopsgate Tunnel, which is the build, big building that's going to be on our that side. At that window, which I can't film because they're there. I should have brought my other phone with these me. These are um, old 1940s uh, overhead portals. Yes, by the way. Uh, thanks for making those work in the modern era, um, no. Noel. <laughs> Good job. Um, so, th what's interesting is this this is collapsing horribly, and uh, like to the point of no honestly it's really going to collapse and there's a load of OSD back to uh, oversight development needs to happen on it and it uh, and it, it it doesn't work as a structure <laughs> it's just gonna collapse it should have collapsed already 
um, and no one's done any maintenance yeah, on it for a very long time, and it's all quite interesting. That's also a very interesting building. That's the Station. Ah, interesting. Of the, of the, yeah, that's the, well, that's what replaced it. That, the, 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 yeah, they are pointing at things that you can't see. Yeah, that's, uh, and, and I have no second cap, so there's no B-roll of it. You just have to guess. Uh, you can probably, like, or point it on train. Google Earth. Or take the train. Yeah, this is it. This is kind of like, it's it's not going to be one, but it could have been a green natter. Our second green natter, when we say scenic yeah. journeys of around an hour and then. But no, what we're doing is just you're seeing our faces whilst I should have set the other phone up and then you have them both, but my other phone is currently on the desk next anyway, doesn't matter. So, um well thanks for inviting me out on this on this, this shenanigans. I we're, saw you I saw you post on Twitter that you like these trains but had not had a not not got on one and I was like, right, we can sort that out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's so, yeah. that's what's happening. That's what and uh Yeah, I, I always enjoy this yeah, this awesome. escape out of um I don't get out of Liverpool Street very often, but I, I, I often am on this bit of railway coming out. So normally I'm coming out here, heading out to Forest Gate to, or, or in that direction. I was out there a lot when I was going working on Crossrail actually, so that'd be quite fun. We'll go through go, go through some interesting bits and pieces I've there got, that I might I've be able got to talk about. I've got all the spiritual connection to Bethnal Green, which you've just gone through. Oh yeah, because that's where my my dad was. So my, my grandfather, uh, he, he liked trains, he liked all engineering, and he got my dad into it. Um, and those days, in the 50s, you could just leave a child at a station. <laughs> so so uh, whilst my dad went, my grandfather went to work in this area, in around Bow and that area, because uh, it was the 50s and it was a Saturday, so people worked, because um, weekends are a fairly new thing, aren't they, Gareth? Yeah, I wonder what type of organisational arrangement uh, and, and collective action allowed us to... Uh, I can't anything no idea. Uh, no idea. No idea. No, I don't know anything about um, that. So, yeah, they, they dump, dump my dad at the station, give the station staff a few a few bob to look after him, get some tea and stuff, and then they just leave. So Bethel Green was a place where my dad... One of the many places across London, East London, uh, North London, where he was uh, watching trains power up the bank, which we've just sailed up on our shiny yeah, effortlessly. Model train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, this episode is going to be all about Stadlers, uh, and we're, we're travelling on a long distance Stadler, and it's quite nice that every now and then there's a little bit of a, ooh, yeah, ooh, which is nice. They, these things are one of the most impressive things about them. We, we're sat above the bogey, and it's pretty not so stuck. We haven't got a, over much. This bit way. of track is not perfect, and Even it feels quite nice. There you go. Um, yeah. Um, and also, they accelerate like a bat out of hell. They're, they are so rapid. I'm hoping that we're going to get a good. I'm trying to think what the accelerate. The, the, the route out of Stratford is not that quick. The problem is we've got we, um, we've got a train ahead of us. Yeah, um, so we might not get the beans at any point. Um, yeah, quite late. But I think once we get that train Everything's out of the way, half past Whitton Way, we might get a bit of run towards Colchester. There's a, there's a canal. Nice. There's a, uh, oh this bit, I worked on this bit, did some of the um, track X work on this on this little loopy alignment around that goes around uh, putting the, both the portal, which is here, Crossrail is about to appear next to us. I should really just do th this, there, the, 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 the portal, there, I should have done that shouldn't I? Yeah, there's a, there's a train in the way, that's fine though. Yeah, the, the portal, uh, also known as the, the splashy waterfall of hell. <laughs> Yeah, right, here we are, pulling into Stratford. Now, I used to come to Stratford a lot because when I was working on, I was doing a lot of West Anglia work when I was in Atkins, so I was working on Crossrail as well. But I wasn't just working on Crossrail, I was working on um, Whammel freight gauging, actually. Mm -hmm. So that was that was some interesting work. Uh, that was one of my first big route gauging schemes when I started perfecting my massive, beautiful spreadsheet that automates everything. Uh, I was handed uh, this, yeah, it was, I was handed handed a big, in fact I did a natter about this didn't I, I did a natter about freight gauging. I was handed um, a process and told that you go manually through the spreadsheet and you copy paste the worst case per structure into a new spreadsheet and I looked at this and I went what? No you don't, do that and so I proceeded to then, it took me a bit of time but I set up using like quite complex array formula, I'm a, I'm a non-macro guy so no macro but I, I did use array formula for no that. Root gauging isn't it? Glorious. Anyway, yeah, yeah well I was doing root gauging and rather than, basically array functions in Excel means that it searches within your array to give you a, a min, max or an if or whatever you do. Uh, now possibly superseded by ifs and some ifs statements. Excel nerds, I'm here with you. Dear if you're watching, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, we're sat in Stratford. Yeah. Um, that was quick. Uh, yes. Hardly noticed. There's some very tall square things near us. Looking quiet. Yeah. So they're going to put um, they're going to put this Madison Square Garden ball thing just between. There's a triangle oh, yeah. there. 
We're on the main line. The Lee Valley line curves off yep. that way. Um, also worked on that. Put this big ball, which is going to shine loads of lights everywhere. Um, and there were some concerns of lights near the railway at night. Um, we have our own lights, uh, and we don't like them being interfered with. No, I don't like the idea of like a bunch of uh, red lights reflecting off everything. Or various different or colours. Or greens, or yeah, whatever greens, happens Yeah, greens, then reds. Um, That's possibly not usually well thought out. But anyway, so you've got lots of people living here now, because of all the building rights that have gone in, you know, the Olympic quote-unquote legacy. Uh, and um, they're going to get blinded all day and all night by this ball. Yeah, they could have just not done the light element of the ball. Yeah, you know, they could have just a shiny ball, ball. Just, a, just a big ball. But anyway, this yeah, Stratford, it's all happening here. It's, it's like a mixed, mixed, mixed feeling on the legacy. Like lots of things have not been delivered, but there are some other things that you know it is a, it, it is a more popular space than a lot of other Olympic parks are globally. Uh, you know, there is a there is a bit of it's fifty fifty on that. It's affordable housing. So like lots of other Olympic parks are on the edge of town and abandoned. This has been a bit of a. It's been part of a bigger picture rejuvenation of this end of London, That's but a it's good like difficult. Topic, actually, uh, what's the transport legacy of various? Oh, uh, there's a good matter. Olympics. Um, that's a good international one because there's some like Athens, Rio, Sydney, like all very different, mostly bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Have a look at the transport legacy. Yeah, that? yeah. There we go. That'll be good, wouldn't it? Maryland, gone. Yeah, That's that was Maryland. <laughs> so we are going through. So Maryland was one of my crossrail jobs. Just, it's, it's a station that should have been closed. They should have, should have just closed it because it's barely off beyond the. It's in fact, it's, it's on. It's within the Stratford station throw. Should have just closed Maryland, but you know. Oh, we could have done all sorts of nice P-way things. Yeah, it could have made it work a bit better. Because it's got short platforms. It's just hopeless. And and as with all the platforms along here, the platforms are all, um, all the six foot are tight. The platforms are all high because in order to get the OLE through, which they had already did with 6 kV rather than 25 kV originally, um, is that they dropped the track to get it under these, all of this, like most of the stations have this sort of road overbridge, the station's built over the top and they've got an overbridge, um, and so to get under that with OLE, they dropped the track, narrow the 6 foot to try and get the wires underneath, and that means that providing compliant platforms is, is almost impossible. Uh, and also providing compliant OLE to, to standing surfaces is almost impossible as well. So a bit of a nightmare really. Lots of Knoll's nice FNF, FNF's unique sort of Great Eastern... Uh, oh, was it bespoke for...? Bespoke set, yeah, pretty much, yeah. But it's a big enough project that you can do that, so it's all quite interesting, um, seeing it all. Manor Park, yeah, that, this isn't what I worked on. There are a few that we worked on, basically. It's providing it's providing a through alignment, on, mostly on the crossrail lines, but also on the mains. But also it was providing platform, compliant platforms, which is relevant to this train, yes. although in a roundabout way, because none of these offices stop at the crossrail stations. But we are going to talk a bit about level boarding. But actually, that's, there are other things we want to talk about on this train, such... Uh, well, let's just think about it, because we've got the fire over here, which amazingly, back in the day, I can't remember when, amazingly, they they built this line with, a, they, they put the one pair of lines on one side, and then they just wanted to swap them over, so they just had a flat crossing for ages. And then eventually they built this fire over here. So there, there are people over there, not in truth, on their privacy, so we believe so you got it. the um, So now the, the slow lines, or the electric lines, they're artificially called. Yep. Um, over there, and we're about to pass um, the depot because it was some interesting stuff. Yeah. But one of the key things here again, so many people, I'm sure we'll come down to this many times, so many people talk about, particularly in relation to Crossrail, one of its biggest failings, going, oh, you can't have freight and a you know, level boarding railway, which is obviously a complete nonsense. So we have tons of freight yeah. down here. Yeah. But there is no reason why, as Gareth said, if this train, or this train, indeed this train type is used on, on Cosmo, there is no reason why you could have fully compliant freight and these trains running through in serving all platforms in the morning. Yeah, it's completely achievable. It's just, unfortunately, politics meant that it had to be delivered out of, you know, the, the, with the Thameslink, uh, Thameslink having got Siemens trains, there was only one place that was going to be delivering the Crossrail trains, that was Derby, and Derby weren't going to, they didn't have the cash to R&D a new train, so they were just using their Electrostars, the Avengers, they're just Electrostars folks, they're just Electrostars, uh, and so that's why that was that, and that, that meant that they, in order to get the level boarding, only in the core section by the way, Way, they built they've built done the most catastrophic thing possible which is build all the permanently build all the platform structures with preformed concrete slab track 
to 1150 millimeters rather than to 915 and building trains that fit just do loudly absolutely direct like do and, and it's gonna become an increasing problem with people getting on in the core and realizing they can't get off anywhere else it's just, it's just really now, not good you, you confirmed something so to my in terms of yeah, there could be a point in the future, 30, 40 years down the line, 30, 40 years of this like, indoor constraint, which is absolutely Wild. painful. Like, I could have, we could have children in that time, they can become full adults and have mobility needs, and it's just ruined. Anyway, yep. but, this, to my mind, as a, as a, as a, as a complete non-expert idiot, um, there's like two ways you could resolve that, right? You can either lift the track, or you can drop the platform. You've said dropping the platform is not possible. Dropping the platforms, the challenge of dropping the platforms is that you, means that you, all of the thresholds to everything no longer work. So the thresholds to the escalators, to the lifts, uh, to all the service ducting, um, all of that, you, you, either you have to create ramps within the platform core or you do the situation where you have a ramp down to the platform surface, which is not possible, it's not safe. You always want to have a ramp away from the, the platform edge so that buggies and things don't wheel it onto the track. Does that does that point there still is that still such a requirement when you have the edge doors. Ed, uh, platform screen door yeah. Platform. Well the the other thing of course is that you the, the moving the platform would also mean that you'd have to rebuild all the platform edge doors which would make it very, very expensive. Less expensive but more challenging. Uh, not necessarily more challenging, less expensive, but still complex and horrible, will be lifting the track with a slab. So you'd have to lift all the track, take away the top layer of concrete, scabble it down, new reinforcing, uh, like reconstruct all the reinforcing mesh, put the new track down. Then you'd have to deal with the fact that you'd have a gauge clearance issue at the corner of where the tunnel and the square, depending on what the construction was, whether it was a through bore or whether it was an excavated hole, you'd have an issue with where the tunnel comes in because actually that corner of circular tunnel and square where it cuts in, the train's going to be getting close to that. Yeah, so, you have to compromise. That. so you'll have to re-engineer that, take that out, spray free, reinforce that. Four per station. Four of those per station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, it's just, a, it was an enormously stupid, bad decision made by, um, made by people who, you know, whether it's engineers, planners, but it was made by people who didn't understand the interface and didn't have any view of what the future should look like and, and, the, and, and had any imagination about what's possible. They just thought about, well, what train are we having to, we know what the train is going to be, let's make this work in the very narrow core section. Right, train, where, where are we going through now? What was uh, it? Gideon Park. Gideon Park, yeah. The only island platform range the whole of park race. Oh, uh, there you go. Very dull factory. Um, so what's our arrangement now? We've, so we're, we're currently, it's electrics and mains, yes. but the electrics are swapped over because of the flyover we went through earlier. Yeah, and then it's electrics all the way through to Shenfield, and then we're on the, the two-track section. Uh, you get the Shen, uh, South End branch goes off South End. Yeah, lovely. And uh, we carry on the upper up parts of Essex. Actually, Essex gets a bad, a bad rep. I joked about Essex earlier. However, um, number one, all of my old East London family ended up going out to South End. So I had many a childhood trip to South End. My great aunt had a balcony overlooking South End Central Station. Now you know why I'm so obsessed with Network South East. Um, but also, um, also, uh, the countryside north of Shenfield is this kind of rolling kind of farmland and it's, it's really like Northern Europe. Oh, interesting, okay. Like okay. Really like Denmark countryside, very similar. Well, I've come back as we're going through Shenfield. I used to picture Shenfield Junction in my lecturing, but I worked on Shenfield Junction. This is one of my first S&C jobs that I, was, that I detailed that as a, as a youth. Uh, yeah, it's quite strange going through it. Cause I've never actually taken crossrail out to. Well, I've never taken you know TFL rail out to Shenfield ever. I've never been to Shenfield. Never been out along this. In fact, we've gone beyond where this is a new railway from. Then. Interesting. So yeah, I was using Shenfield as an example in my um, evidence to the House of Commons to the really? Transport Select Committee. In fact, in the, the TSC IRP report, which I have gone through last episode, maybe no, two episodes ago. Oh, I can't. Remember. Some episodes ago. That's, that's next week's episode, isn't it? In terms of our the real timeline we're in. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, no, I refer to Shenfield because I refer to the fact that Shenfield has 15,000 seats an hour into London and it's 20 miles outside of London and Belper, which is 10 miles outside of Derby, has uh, 250 seats. 250, 250 seats? 250 seats, which is, uh, which is 
towards Derby, so uh, <laughs> per hour per direction, yeah. So it's just a, a chronic difference. Simon, you have specific experience of this because you worked on Norwich in '90. Oh. Anyway, um, the challenge of these railway lines going out in this direction into East Anglia, it, in in getting, they potentially more than any other bit of railway in the country, show the challenges of running fast long distance services on a railway network that is also a suburban network. Um, so, so yeah, lots of discussion about Norwich in 19 achieving, and it's been discussed since BR days, of, of achieving a 90 minute time from, from Liverpool Street to Norwich. Um, it's essentially not possible, no matter how much you improve the infrastructure, because as, as you're saying, if you run the trains faster, they only catch up the suburbans quicker. So then if you really want to prioritise long distance services, you have to cut suburban services, which you can't do because the suburban services are all full. <laughs> they are very well used and ideally you'd have more of them. So it's like an eternal point of, yeah, you need more steel. There's, there's no other way of resolving that issue than more steel. You know, this is a two-track railway, it should be a four-track railway, or mm, potentially you need a high-speed line connecting out into this, into this area. And this is, you know, we're on a, we're on a former intercity route. This is an intercity route. Yeah, the Norwich, the Norwich trains, you, you did your, your last rail NASA, you highlighted all, in your alternative history, you highlighted all the intercity routes. Uh, London to Norwich was an intercity route. Yep. Um, and arguably, they've, whilst these trains were ordered in a very much a commuter market kind of point of view, it's still very much that having a high, occasion for a higher respect as Greater Anglia has had to do by virtue of um, trying to run. Yeah, this Norwich service, it's made it a better spec, and that's why you've got this dedicated fleet for Norwich trains. So it, it has that innocent element to it naturally. We also have, however, um, this is the line to Felixstowe. This is one of the two routes that brings you to Felixstowe um, freight terminal um, yep. for, for containers. It's the busiest port for, it's one of the busiest ports for containers in the country. It's certainly the busiest rail port. I, I managed to put one of the other, I think the second biggest one is Southampton. The Felixstowe is much bigger yeah. than Southampton. It's also partly because sounds it's much more constrained, both in terms of docking um, than it is and uh, rail capacity. Bidster has two routes. You have the London route, so there may be a uh, there is uh, there is no freight coming currently scheduled this morning. That might be because of the shenanigans on the uh, oh yeah yeah the, um, sending them uh, everywhere else. Yes, and we're sending the other way, which is um, by Ely uh, and towards the West Fitton that way. So we have lots of freight. We have a dedicated commuter market through the Essex um, kind of outer areas, which feeds into the street. And then we have the Norwich longer distance, which is like your beyond Ipswich and connections regionally to Suffolk and Norfolk. So you have a two track railway trying to do all of those things. Now, for the Norwich 90, if I'm being cynical, Norwich 90 was just about being able to deliver a catchy timetable. Yeah. And that is the worst reason to do a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To Gimmicks. Make, press, government by press release. So we early, want to do a thing because yeah. it sounds good. Okay, well, let's see how practical it is. Well, they actually managed to introduce elements of Norwich 90 back in, I want to say May. Maybe, actually, it was December 18, I think. Yeah, I can believe it. I think it was December 18. Yeah. So the way they did this was quite funny. It was really shonky. What they did is they went, right, we're going to run a Norwich in 90 service. It will stop at Ipswich and then Norwich. And it will do Ipswich in 60 and it will do Norwich in 90. And there'll be one of them a day. And <laughs> it was one a day each direction. But you know what they had to do? What they realised is one of the, one of the benefits of these trains is that they hoover up a lot of the people that otherwise crowd onto the like shorter distance trains that go to places like Colchester, Clacton, Braintree. With we, we are craw ironically we are crawling along. Yeah. We, we left late Liverpool Street late. We've lost our power. We're approaching Chelmsford behind the Braintree train. There is the problem, folks. Yeah, we're we're living it. So um, to do the Norwich and ninety headline number, right, the gimmick but provide the capacity required to do that service, it meant that you had to run another Norwich train behind the fast one to pick up all the passengers you just, you just flashed abandoned. past. Yeah, yeah. So it didn't, it wasn't really... It just made a mess of a timetable. Like it's like you, yeah. you had a typical situation where you've got two trains within the first eight minutes of the hour and then a 48 minute gap and then the next cluster. Yeah, it's just not... So it was just, it was completely botched. It was completely, but I mean, really, my impression when working on that project at the time, um, from a consultancy point of view, was basically a case of saying, right, 
Noisy 90 is, is, the, is the gimmicky headline. We shouldn't have gone, that's what we should deliver, because it wasn't practical. What we should have gone is gone, or well, the project should have been around, how close can we get to that that delivers the best service for the longer distance? Norwich is about 115 I think, or 100 miles away from London. It's a, that's yeah, far. No, like Birmingham. Yeah, it's a distance. It's Birmingham kind of territory. Like Leicester is that far away. You don't think of Leicester near London. Mm. And it would be Norwich near London. But it is. It's right. quite far. So you've got 100, 115 miles. British Transport Police that's a long distance. We'll sort it. See it, say it, sort it. Um, so you have a you have that long distance service, which caters for a market which is far away. But then you have all the destinations in between, like you know, south of Ipswich and Colchester, which are feeding into London, whether that's for leisure purposes, commuting, or whatever. Yeah, that's still a thing in the post COVID world. We were all talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, so you have to design a timetable which which benefits everyone, or to be more specific, where the least people are inconvenienced. Because you're going to be convinced some people, that's what's going to happen. Um, so that's how you have to organise your timetable. And the challenge of that is doing it on a, a two-track railway. That's why there was a lot of shenanigans around a, a new station being built near where we are arriving to, called Chelmsford, um, which was uh, Beanie Road, which is about having a, a bit of track in a three, well, making it a three-platform station. I think I can say this, a three-platform station. It's been um, getting designed next on the desk next to me. In fact, I was checking it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a I don't know if I didn't say that either, but I've said <laughs> it, and this is definitely going out. So yes. uh, there you go. So a three-platform station, which gives you a bit of a bit of casting. Cross over the river. Nice little, little fountain. Think River Chelm, probably. Chelm's Falls. Falls. There's a network south east side on the old box. I can't remember something down on that side. Um, but, but yeah, so if you try and squeeze everything into a two track railway, it's going to be a bit rubbish, <laughs> basically. And, if yeah. you, and, and like doing headline figures. Crikey, it's amazing. It's amazing. It shows how long it's been since I've been through it. Um, there's all sorts of new stuff going on. Uh, so yeah, all the boxes. We're in spec. We're looking for. We're yeah, looking we're for branding. Looking for, we're looking for a box. Um, I think it's on that side. I can't see it. But the point is, is that you can't. You can't just shove in extra services and accommodate the freight and all the other markets that you need to without just making a really poor railway for everyone. Which is why the case must be for investment in capacity. Um, so, for example, you could, you could probably you could probably send more freight by the cross country route if you a rebuild Ely North Junction mm. and b electrify the route. Yeah, absolutely. And why is this why is this particular why is this particularly relevant to the the IRP TSC report that, that I was the TSC's IRP report I was referring to earlier because repeating all of those mistakes of Norwich in ninety is exactly what the IRP does on the East Coast Main Line and on Northern Pass, from Northern Paris Rail. All the same mistakes being repeated again of we're going to do our, we're going to have a headline stupid political press release driven speed figure and sacrifice everything else. And it's why it's such a joke that everyone, these are the same people who are going on about, oh, you know, 20 minutes faster to London, oh, HS2, blah, 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 without realising that's and then making that exact same argument in favour of the integrated rail plan, which they have been criticised heavily for in the by the Transport Select Committee. So yeah, very frustrating to just basically repeat those lessons. And it's not like we learnt those for the first time on Norwich in 90. We learnt those successively over and over again on you know on we, we learnt it on route, on modernisation of uh, you know during the modernisation plan on, on the West Coast Main Line so that the West Coast Main Line upgrade and then again on route mod on, on the West Coast mod, uh, route mod in the in the late nineties and through the two thousands you know we learnt these lessons over and over and over again uh, middle Main Line LSI similar challenges you know what was it called as um, LDHSS project on middle Main Line all tied together of like try again trying to prioritise these high speed trains for the fastest trains and realising it's just not possible to achieve that whilst running a mixed traffic railway without sacrificing freight and suburban capacity which you know as, I, as I've said several times before I'm enjoying the um, Marriage Miller's uh, Tower of, I love a tower with a branding with a, a name on it that's always good there is, a, there is also an aggregate freight depot down the bottom Ooh. of this embankment which was a Royal Mail thing for a while oh, nice. uh, we can't see it but, but, yeah. so we have so again Great Eastern Main Line it's not this is not my patch but um, it's not just about freight it's not just about containers and, and boxes moving around. That's about 40% of what we do on the on, on GB Rail. Um, we also move in a phenomenal amount of construction stuff. Mm, um, yep. So that's mainly sand and stone, which we use to build housing, which we all need, uh, and various other crucial bits of infrastructure. And we move 
millions of tons of that every year by rail, not on the roads, which is great for everyone. Yeah, because it's heavy and road damaging. The thing that Britain's railways are very good at is actually we're very good at long distance services. We're very good at, we're actually pretty good at freight services. Yes, it's, it's, things are hard for, for Simon to make work, but actually we're pretty good at freight. We are dreadful. Uh, rural services we're quite good at as well. Rural services we actually do pretty well. People might disagree with that, but frankly they're, they're wrong. Rural services are pretty good in Britain. The things we're dreadful at is suburban connectivity. We're rubbish at it outside of London. And it's and it's the suburban capacity that really benefits people because those it's that suburban capacity that gets people out of their cars because then they're getting close to their home on the, you know, I'd, I, I'll do a rail match episode on how the last mile is not a problem. Lots of people say, how do you solve the last mile issue? You don't need to. It, it, it's a thing that people say to pretend that that's why public transport doesn't work, but it's a lie. Uh, it's not an issue if you just provide sufficient uh, density to suburban stations and have a suburban railway network. Anyway, enough of that rant. There you go. Norwich in 90 and why that's relevant to, to our current woes. There, I'll do a little chapter with some jazz plays. We're going about 100 miles an hour. We're, we're actually at full speed, which is nice. It's a chance for us to sort of probably talk more broadly about the comfort of these these trains. So you know, the whole point of this episode. I've, I've no idea what the point of this episode was, but I think I think it'll be titled something like Simon and Gareth decide whether the Stadlers are the best trains in Britain, something like that. Anyway, um, so a few thoughts. A few thoughts when I step. I mean, obviously level boarding. We're part level boarding because we've talked. We'll, I'll probably talk to death about that. We'll probably do some filming of the actual interface, and we'll open the door and close it a few times. And um, ride comfort in this. The seats are, I mean, firm compared to the squidge of like Mallard refurb GNER type seats, but I find these more comfortable anyway. Uh, they're probably not as hard as the LNER as like the GWR seats, but I hate seat chat anyway. It's very subjective. I find it quite. I find these really comfortable riding these for hours. Um, very nice. This is just standard, but it's got a nice little leather, easy wipe sort of headrest. They've got the seat indicators are quite smart. They've got nice hooks, so there's quite there's a couple of hooks per seat, which is quite nice. Um, decent amount of luggage space, there's a few people resting luggage on chairs and things. Um, charger is quite nice, the charger is upside down so it points the thing upwards which is nice. Yeah. Um, this bit's carpeted, it's all carpeted which is, which is which does make a difference I think. It makes a difference to the acoustic, it looks good, it looks clean. These are definitely being cleaned, unlike the LNER, sorry LNER, your trains are not being cleaned enough. And also the Thameslink trains are just absolutely filthy and graffitied interior at the moment, should we got a nice viaduct. It's nice though. Lovely viaduct. A chance to have a look at the pleasant countryside and the blue skies as well. Very nice. Oh, there's a golf course. Men who uh, didn't want to ask other men to go for a walk, so they invented a sport that is just going for a walk. Anyway. Um, what do you think then? What else have I missed? Uh, talk, uh, the space, the big yeah, the big windows make a huge difference. The, 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 the squareness, the cabin is very square at the top. They really made the most of the, of the gauge, you know, the envelope. Uh, or just the way they're shaped. They're just quite square, which again gives them a nice European feel. It makes it feel wider, less claustrophobic. The PIS, passenger information system, uh, screens are very good, they're very clear. Yeah, they're, put some B-roll up of that now. They're nice screens, and also, we, so we were, we were approaching Colchester, as you may have heard on the, on the PA. Uh, the, um, oh, three, two, one. the um, on the PA, the announcement we're approaching the station, it has the connections. It says the next train's off Colchester, depart yeah. this time. This is, this is, is a modern, railway feel um, yep. that, that, that you want and expect and we can have that and Stadler have provided that uh, which is great because you know, that's the kind of stuff that we you know we talk about a pasture friendly railway uh, and how we can get customers and, and you know, what's our messaging to the customers and stuff it's, it's basic basic stuff provide them information about their onward journey there's a, there's a buffer stop it's a very weird arrangement here. you've got like yeah, two it's, buttons it's and one good. it's a bit of a funny arrangement um, yeah. So you've got the big windows, so you've, got, you've got the cusp information screens, those, those are good, the cusp information systems, those, those are really good. Um, all tables, that's, that's the thing. Yes, nice wooden finish, or faux wood yeah, finish. And, and like, all t it, it, it's almost all tables, I don't know how much airline seating there is, but it's mostly tables, I think, isn't it? There's a bit, but there's loads of tables, which is nice if that's what you want, you know, long distance journeys. Sorry, I interrupted you, what? Well, no, no, yeah, I think, I think, so we're sat above, you can see the, um, that's the, well, the articulated uh, bits between them. So you've got a carriage sitting above Above, uh, a bogey, um, so they're having two bogeys and a carriage and whatever. Um, you know, we're on we're on Great Eastern Mainline track. It's hammered by lots of trains, including heavy freight trains, running at 75 miles an hour. 
um, uh, at probably 1,200 ton train loads, like, you know, probably about 20 or 40 other days. These get decent equivalent million gross tons per annum, uh, equated rather, they, they get it's, a hammering. We are, the we are technically good. sitting on what, what should be the worst the riding the part of the train. Sure it's been a couple of months, but it's pretty good. It's quite comfortable, yeah, it's not It's not a vibratory, certainly not the ride issues that you get on the... Um, Sorry, Hitachi and, and LNER and Network Rail on the, on the East Coast Mainline, but the ride quality on the East Coast Mainline at the moment is dreadful, really problematic. It's a mixture of degraded earthworks and subgrade, but also the track quality is just not being kept to standard. It's really, the IETs don't like it. They really get a wobble on They start. There's several videos I've done of like the doors being jammed up, like wobbled open by the fact that the bogey is hunting really badly. It shouldn't be happening on there. Yeah, it's a vertical thing, but it triggers a, a yaw, a, a hunting motion, which is quite strange. Anyway, I digress. I haven't had any issues like that on this. Very comfortable. Um, yeah. And they're big, long trains. Oh, okay, we've talked about some spec issues. The flappy down uh, seats are a bit annoying. Uh, and, and this, we haven't been up to, we will go up to the bar car, even though it's closed. We'll go up and have a look at it at some point. Um, Hike to the other end of the train. Yeah, quite. We will go and have a look at it because I want to have a look at it to compare it to, you know, one co one issue I think is that these are, they're a bit homogenous. They could do with, so they've got a bit of bike space, not much. They could do with a bigger, so we I'll, I'll put some B roll up again. We'll train before this one. Loads of bicycles. There was like 10 bicycles, I think. Like there were loads of people trying to get bicycle bikes on, which they always struggled with. Um, so they could do with having a, a bigger bike section. They're big long trains, they've got the space for it. Also, they could do with. They, this, it's a long enough train, they could do things like having a little family section. They're, it's a long enough train, there are things they could do with them, I think. Yeah. Isn't it? It's a little bit homogenous. There's, there's some, again, things, some quality things they could add, but it's again, it's about that DFT maximise the seat spec issue. Um, um, I've, yeah. I've done some, I've, I've definitely let this not no, yeah. this up on Google. <laughs> uh, so the tri these are 236 and a half metres long. It's a so, long train. So that is uh, four metres short of a 12 car, your standard 20 metre long, like a three, that Electrostar 321 yeah, yeah. that's all got before it. So it's almost as long as that, but of course there's no cabs. The only bit of lost, lost space you have is that bit where the two units kind of filled together, earlier. Which we yeah. earlier. Um, also, you've got um, double leaf doors, so and there's about one per carriage. So effectively, it's like having the ones at the ends, but, but there's actually you actually get more people on off. I think it'd be quicker. Yeah, circulation is I think easier and more straightforward. Yeah. Um, there are uh, 704 seats. That's a high Norwich number area. of seats. 81st class and 624. IET has standard. just over 600. So. Now I don't know how many of those will be. See, there'll be a, there'll be a bunch of tip-ups as well. So interestingly, you see, you see we, we did slag off the uh, tip-up for us just before. Um, so just just at the, the doorway, just over there, there was a family who had a buggy. These aisles aren't suitable. We can't have a buggy in the middle of the aisle. So yeah, yeah. They, they put it by the door. They use the tip, and they can stay there and, and keep everyone together on what is a very 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 busy train. So there is, yeah, some value there. Some, yeah, um, I've just noticed that the, 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 so they, they don't have a vestibule. They've got a middle bit where the, the, these double leaf doors are. They do have ceiling do, interior doors that all seem to be open, which is interesting. You know, yeah, it's, there. it must be. Uh, we haven't had any draft. I mean, it's an, it's a hot day. So in winter, it'll be interesting to compare to see how that impacts. We haven't had any drafts coming through. Um, they must be, so they must be locked out. Maybe they're locked out, which is an interesting one to to think about. Yeah, well, we'll later on we'll be travelling on a on a, an electric star. Uh, I'm going to keep that an electric star. It's just like I'm going to keep calling Crossrail Thameslink Two, or I'm going to keep calling Elizabeth the line Crossrail, but not calling Crossrail, calling it Thameslink Two. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, we walked through one earlier for for a, for a walk through to get a bit of comparison. It's so much less pleasant to walk through. Like it's uh, the, 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 the the corridor is very very narrow. The gangway is very narrow because they've got five. Five breast seating, so greater angle and CTC. Uh, if you're listening, please rip out the third seats and make what could be a fairly decent train. Okay, the, the floors are a problem, which is obviously one of the reasons we're here because we're looking at a low floor variant, which could be suitable for the whole of Britain, which would be amazing. Uh, yeah. But on the Electro Star, I'm putting the A in Adventure on the <laughs> um, You could say that. Um, if you, if you just have a nice wide aisle with a 2 plus 2 seating layout and the areas around the um, the UAT, the Universal Access Toilets, uh, and the uh, bike areas, they're really capacious. They're yeah, really, yeah. You actually see how wide the, 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 the trains actually are in terms of the one shot. You could make a, a perfect nice train, uh, which would be perfectly suitable for, for running around on the uh, suburban 
middle distance stuff they do out of London. Um, and remember as well that one of my, when I get one of my big bugbears is we have all this stuff that we think so much about, we as an industry, as a sector, we think so much about the kind of specs we want on a train that runs into and out of London. Why isn't this running between Liverpool, Manchester, York, Leeds? Leeds, Leeds always gets a bad deal. Um, these trains are going to Hull, obviously we need to try it all, but th this is the quality. And we'll get to this later when we're doing the yeah. regional variant as well. This is the, the kind of quality that we provide has, has so, for so long has been like what fills out the bottom of a spreadsheet. Yeah. And it shows. It really does. And it's, it's interesting because so TPE have made that advance. The, the new TPE fleet is much nicer than the, the 185s. The 185s were glorified, well, glorified pace, but they were basically like upgraded sprinters. They were not much of a step up from the sprinters they replaced at all, really. Uh, not in capacity and not in quality. Yeah, they were nice, but they were not, sorry, they're just not the level that, that you get in the new, the, the, the TP IETs. I've not been on a 397 yet, actually, but the IETs and the Mark 5As. Um, but, but again, for various reasons, some of them signalling, but some of them train procurement, they're short trains, they could be longer. The frequency is a hit now. They're all round because the frequencies drop. But it, it, there is a measurable difference. This feels like a. It, it does. The thing I was wanting to see is, given the, the fact this is quite a fun, fundamentally different, from an engineering mechanical engineering perspective, quite a different layout, different arrangement to to the conventional yeah. like, in city stock in the UK uh, in GB. I wanted to compare, it and, and it just it feels like an intercity train. It's it's you know it's, it's perfectly reasonable. Actually, it. It's, it's more evocative of the original Mark threes with the with the sort of the split the, the sort of vertical splitters part way through the coach. It almost yeah. feels a bit like the original Mark threes then. So uh, possibly I don't know whether the Mark three interiors look like that before they got replaced. But there's a big step between the, for people the change between Mark three which were knackered and falling to bits compared to this is a big leap. So people have noticed the difference going to Norwich. It was a nice nostalgia run when the, when the 90s were. Um, well, the class 90s, not the 1990s, uh, when the class 90s were running with the Mark III sets. It was a nice nostalgia era, and they basically hadn't changed them since they came off the West Coast in like 2004-ish. Yeah. Which was great for me, like, oh, this is fun, it's like my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> but also my childhood was a long time ago, as was Gareth. Um, yeah. Not wanting to sound too old. But that's that's reality. But I suppose for the key test in terms of, is this an it, is it a train spec, etc. is you go, right, well, we're doing an hour and a half, which we, is a perfectly valid city journey of an hour and a bit to Birmingham is a city journey. Yeah. This is an intercity city journey. So would we want to sit on this uh, to Edinburgh, which is like, you know, four or five hours away? Uh, yes. Yeah, well, and we ask us again when we get to Norwich, but yeah, I, I think so. We're, we're arriving in Manningtree where, where the OLE failure shenanigans uh, at OLE mass has fallen over. Uh, hence why we're delayed. So, uh, is it yeah, 153, isn't it? Or 153, look. I mean, Simon have walked up to the other end so far. It's such a long trip. Why did we decide to not go next to the bar car? It's because I didn't think about what we were going to do today. Anyway, um, we've come to the bar car. This is it's, it's continuing the decidedly mainland European theme in that there is, okay, it's closed, which is kind of annoying. Uh, it'd be quite nice to get some food, peckish. But we're going to eat something in Norwich. Anyway, it's a proper, like this little bar. It's like a little, little sort of bar situation. Just really lean on this, like nice bar, bar lean height. Yeah, good test. Yeah, good. Um, it's quite nice. Can you come this way? It's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's brushed alley It's a shame it's closed because then we can't really tell you anything about what, what it's like. But um, other, than, other than hearing in, to be fair, the galley looks, it just looks like a stand one. It looks a bit like the L and the R one. I do Except have there some, is a bar type. No, it's, it's all right. Yeah. There's some stuff. I do have a photo. I, I came on the first train when it ran. It was like January 2020, way back then. Um, and um, I got on one from Ipswich to London. And it was very nice. We get coffee and tea. It was great. So, leaning back on the bar. Well, if I looked at Ali, went to the loo, uh, did, I filmed inside the loo, which is a bit, bit weird That's to bit, do that. It's a bit, yeah, bit, yeah. bit weird. It's, 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 it's quite small. It's a specialist topic. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty small. <laughs> um, we just looked at the cycling provision, which is. So it's, it's better than a lot of long distance trains. It doesn't rely on vertical trucks. At least six there were, bikes. There were, uh, there were definitely four. If there were that, well, we, we have video footage which we can review. Um, it's definitely better than most provision because it's uh, yeah. not vertical, which yes. means it's usable. Oh, vertical and is just a waste of time. Accessible. Yeah, vertical is just a waste of time. And also behind us is the is the, the accessible area, kind of a, a, an open area for people to for, for kind of wheelchair users to come in. And, so that's busy. It's quite busy actually. Um, it's quite. But the thing is, generally, the trouble with the seating density is there isn't. Even though there's level boarding everywhere, it's a little harder. Like you can't necessarily wheelchair in everywhere, which is one of the advantages of having level boarding. So it's like I think yeah. there's a little bit of work could have been done. Again, the trouble with the high density seating is maybe that does. 
but uh, yeah, it's supposedly with the Stadler, it's certainly seven is the case that they're accessible in every, in every door, and, you, and the, the, the corridor, the gangway is wide enough. Not the gangway. The the the, 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 the what's the aisle? The aisle. The aisle is wide enough that you can actually wheelchair up and down. I suppose you got a different setup because I think they want. I think there's one of the reasons they put the um, the kind of wheelchair area here is because you've got the the universal access toilet yeah. in there, and it's next to the. And, and it, what's also sensible is at staff. least it is next to you can get the staff, but also you can get yourself some scram without it being. It took us long enough to get off the train, you know. So um, yeah, we we were sat like halfway in front. We were about we were a, a the coach or two train. beyond the. A coach or two beyond yeah, the, the other half, yeah. You've got the first class, which is like a coach and a half. It's, it's just two plus one. The seats are slightly bigger. It's, it's yeah, it's fine. There's no particular difference, but the whole lot is quite nice anyway. So, yeah, exactly. I think the only thing I've noticed where maybe, and this is where, well, this is where, you, again, you're going to your expertise, is, to me, the the width, the full width of the floor level seems a little bit narrower than, say, like a Alex Raystar. That maybe that is probably true because it will be because in order to it might be slightly narrower to deal with the fact that it's dropped down to that the floor is at nine fifteen rather than at um, eleven hundred. So that does mean that you get a slight narrowing at the, at the below the hip or at the at the waist, if you like. So the hip comes out a bit at the waist. Is that seems a slight pinching? You do see a slight pinching by having nine fifteen. It's, it's enough. Yeah, it, it's one back by the seats. The seats win a bit back because you can widen at the seat shape. Can be quite clever with that, but it does mean they're slightly narrower. But for me, that's like an acceptable. That's the engineering compromise. But just this train. There, so there are two things here, and we'll, we'll, we'll see this in the regional one. This train proves that it, the idea that you can't fit the underfloor equipment under the train if you have a 915 floor at height is it's nonsense for an electric train. But we kind of knew that already. We're about to prove that there is a solution for regional trains for d to diesel on the on the regional one. Um, once we work out where we're going, which might be Yarmouth, I'll be off to Yarmouth. Mystery, but we don't know. Um, anyway, that's the next bit. This is it? We've arrived. We're um, about to hop off. Just having a little Wood Street first class. Uh, make the most of the level boarding, which it is because they've actually put the platform in the right place, which they haven't. One of the problems with Greater Anglia's fleet, Simon's buying this, he's with us. One of the problems with Greater Anglia's fleet is that they, um, the trains are great, but never they didn't do it as part of a system. Unlike Merge Rail, which looked at the system, there was not a systems approach particularly, or rather there wasn't the budget. Network Rail wasn't willing to stump up the budget because it's a big old you know, multi-decade legacy issue to actually upgrade the platforms to 915 because there are lots that aren't. Not lots of platforms that aren't in the don't have the standard correct offsets. Um, we've talked a little bit about why that's the case in, in inner London, but that doesn't really apply to these because they don't stop in inner London. So, um, but anyway, it's very nice to see huge numbers of people getting off a train with a floor height that's level with the um, level with the platform. It's very nice. And we're arriving into Norwich. I'm going to walk through. There's all these poor people around us. Um, yeah, we had a little look at first class there, Simon. We uh, what else was we looking at? I was. There were some other bits and pieces I was looking at in the back there that I was thinking, oh yeah, we were going through Ipswich and likewise then arriving in here to Norwich and thinking, you know, given the hot weather, a lot of people ask me, you know, what's the main issue? Why do we run trains slow? People ask daft things like, oh, should we go back to the days of jointed track? And it's like, no, actually, because all the issues that we have, the majority of issues we have are in these station throats like here or at Victoria where... Um, <laughs> Where the, 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 it's it's knackered old jointed track, unstressed S and C, and you know it's it's track that's been there since at least the 60s, and no one's touched it and done anything with it. That's the area that is is massive buckle risk. Um, yeah, so uh, it's quite interesting seeing that. So I did a bit of filming of that. Anyway, this is nice. Look at this. We're walking, uh, walking through. In fact, you know, what, I'm going to spin around and show you. Look at this is nice, isn't it? Lovely, nice. Little train that, uh, another, it's all Stadlers here now. Stadler, so Stadlers ones. galore. There are some That's nice. going to Sheringham. It's absolutely packed. Um, yeah, packed. Oh yeah. Also, we're saying all these trains are packed. We're just on, on on trains today. It's yeah. These are rural, like rural regional services, like Gareth said before. These are rural regional services. They're extremely popular, and as we'll see later, they've had a massive upgrade in terms of in terms of rolling stock quality. And, yeah, massive. And that means also that you attract people to rail. Funny that, yeah. Radical notion, uh, radical notion. Anyway, there we are. That's uh, that's it. We're gonna. 
We're the gonna explore, now. we're almost at the barriers. We're gonna work our way through the barriers and then we'll have a look at Norwich station. So that was, I mean, it's very busy. Norwich, very busy station. And it's quite nice, it's not quite, it looks more grand when you approach because it's got this big dome, which will hopefully do a bit of filming of outside. But uh, it's nice, isn't it? We we're enjoying the fact that there's, I don't know if I, I tried to film it, but it, it's an anti glare screen, it wasn't quite working. But um, there are trains both to London Liverpool Street and Liverpool Lime Street, which is admittedly a little confusing. Liverpool Street is actually a bit of a strangely named station. Uh, and a little bit confusing. Anyway, uh, yeah, Norwich. I mean, Norwich, for the first time ever. Aha! I bet a million people don't do that every time and annoy all the locals. Right, that's it. Let's escape Norwich. Simon is here. We're now going through what is a very nice... Look at this. It's just... It's, it's nice, isn't it? Look, see on my nose. Anyway, um, well, here we go. This is nice. How, is it going to be an enormous car park, as often is the case in, in railway stations? Oh, a little pork, pork for sure there. Just, uh, oh, look, this nice is cool. We're going to walk this way, look, because I think behind us, view, there's a nice building over there. 1921. What is that, I wonder? It's nice over there as well. Behind us is. Yeah, yeah, it's very grand. Norwich Station. Look at that. It's nice. It's kind of. Um, One of many Norwich stations. Central European vibes, actually. It's kind of. We've, we've stolen that roof from a mixture of uh, Paris and, French, yeah. and Austria. It is a bit French. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, anyway, here we are. Uh, uh, lovely. So right. uh, there, was a, there was a number of stations here. I think people will know better than me, uh, and I don't want to Google it. Uh, there, was, there was a Thorpe station and a Victoria station. And I think one of them is this one. I think this was Thorpe. I think Victoria <laughs> closed. All right, um, I think that may have got beaching or whatever. We say beaching. Or the klaxon just went off. Um, uh, so that was that was Norwich station. Uh, we're gonna go. Where are we gonna go? I see the spiky thing is over there. I that's presume that's nice, the main spiky that's thing. That's a very nice spiky thing. And that's the main spiky thing. We might go. I mean, yeah, we're gonna go get some lunch and then we're gonna continue our adventure. So uh, Simon and I have come to to the, the place that everyone comes to in Norwich when they when they come here. It's the, the most kind of probably the most well known landmark, and that is of course the uh, the Marsh Victoria Building here. Uh, as you can see, partially if not wholly abandoned the insurance building. Uh, why are we here? Well, because we're stood. Simon, Simon's behind. I've lost Simon. Uh, because we're stood on the footprint of the former. Uh, Norwich Victoria Station. In fact, we're going to walk this way towards uh, an overbridge that went over the railway line. It's just carpets and stuff piled up. It might be that it's not. I mean, there's lots of people in the car park, but maybe it's just being used as a private car park now. Who knows? The building has abandoned vibes. This isn't brutalism. This is not brutalism. It's just it's just slightly naff. Like maybe even early 80s. That's uh, I'm getting early 80s or late 70s. I, I could be completely wrong on that, but I'm not getting like earlier vibes out of it. The station closed in 69. So, so yeah. they would have flattened the land. I don't know if it was retained for any freight usage because sometimes that lingered on for a bit. That does uh, happen sometimes. So here's we're trying to look for any hints of, of railway infrastructure, but the only one is really well. You can see over here if I rotate round, see over there you can see some some sort of more classic, familiar-looking railway abutments. Uh, or sort of with the gardens behind, and then we're going to go to a, a very obvious rail blue brick uh, overbridge, and this will be the hint as to the fact that railway infrastructure is coming through here. Bit of a shame that they've not made more of a connection of the cycle path through these overbridges and allowing, but they've just sold the land, haven't they, for cheap? Um, yeah. We're going to turn around momentarily, and that's that's our little pilgrimage to Norwich. You can see the building behind there in its glorious entirety. Like that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, this is unmistakably a railway structure behind it's quite us. It's nice, it's a nice, it's a satisfying skewed arch. Yeah, it has got quite a skew actually. Provided some concrete support, so possibly it's not actually that healthy a structure. <laughs> Trains coming through here and popping out over there in what is now a car park and an insurance building. Classic. So we just ran our way, I'm showing some footage right now of us running through, uh, through following up Norwich pilgrimage, running through Norwich back, little, little sneaky little way back to railway station. We 
doing another stand there, this time. Now it's remarkably pretty similar, but uh, I, I mean, which is a good thing. It reflects well the fact that we're, uh, this is nice. Look, this, is, this is nice. There's some nice sort of marshy, low-level, bronzy type of stuff. It's the furthest out into this part of the country I've uh, ever been. Norwich, Norwich is behind us. We're done with Norwich. We're now on our way to, um, to Yarmouth. It's a great, great Yarmouth, in fact. Yarmouth it used to have many stations. Oh, another place that had many stations, and now it has but one. And we're not going to spend much time on it, because I think we're pretty much going to hop out and hop into another train on the way back. Perception of this train. In honesty, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's clearly very similar to respect to the train, terms of quality, it's good. It is. Uh, one thing I'm noticing, this will, I imagine, be very related to the track quality. But it is considerably louder than the bogey. This line, we're on jointed track. There's a lot of vibration going on. Simon's pointing to his glasses bouncing around on the. Uh, oh, that is noisy. Well, it's an interesting comparison of what the difference track quality makes because there's nothing different about this train. We're, we're sat in about the same position. Yeah. The, 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 the bogey setup might be slightly different. They might have arranged it slightly differently. Um, which will get us onto a point about train speeds momentarily. But anyway, this is definitely not as good a ride. What's interesting, I mean, we could be on giant track actually. The opposite side is not. The opposite side is. This sounds very jointed. Similar, but this is sounding like the frequency of 60 foot joints. We can't tell because we're on the track, so I can't look at it. What would be quite fun is if they had glass floored trains, like those boats. Oh, that would be glass floored trains. That would be fun for like the, you know, 2000 PW engineers that are in the UK yeah. or whatever. But anyway, yeah. um, this is nice. So, what, what else is there? Well, I tell you what, we'll talk about speed. So on the, on the, the, the interstate train we were on uh, earlier, so you're, it's a 100 mile an hour train. You reckon it's 110 mile an hour capable without much. I think a bit of tweak to the suspension, it's 110. But it isn't 100. But that that platform could be 125 mile an hour. They, they could, you know, Stadler could make that 125 mile an hour train. So it could be running at least with mainline. But what I don't know is is whether you'd have to do any engineering on that, um, or whether it would be. I think the traction power is there, 125 definitely. Yeah. Does it to how much engineering would be required to make them run at 125? Yeah, the bogies might, you know, they might need new bogies or, or something like that, which can be a pretty substantial. The other thing, of course, is that you know. From a, an assurance perspective, it'd be a new if it was running on, particularly if it's running on adjusted or or new bogies, it'd be a new classified as a new train, so it'd have to go through the same, not the whole pack of assurance processes, but there'd be another series of, of assurance processes to, to classify that and get it running on the network. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, just, I'm just noticing the difference. The track has calmed down, so it seems like we were we were, we're on we were on jointed, now we're on welded, and now we're going through Brundle Gardens, um, and uh, it's. Smooth. Now there's a faint run behind us, which is the cupboard of thrash. <laughs> it is the, the, the thrashing cupboard uh, um, behind us, yeah that's true. We walked through it, I'll show you, as we got on, we walked through it and it's, it's rumbling. Quiet. You can't really hear it. Like it's, it's louder for people st standing next to it. I think the, the vibrations, you could, yeah, you could, you could feel it a little bit, but um, I think the vibrations are, I can't tell if they're track or they're engine related. Yeah, it's true. Thank you. Where's it gone? Oh, there it is. I put it on the table the whole time. There you are. Thank you very much indeed. She's showing the guard that she's never seen one of those before. No, she's not seen one of those before. An Anglia Plus Day Ranger. There, yeah, that's, that's, that's the ticket that we're using. Anyway. Yeah. Fo focus, focus, focus. Anyway, uh, that's that done. That's my rail. I'm not wearing it because it's, it's, I do have it with me just in case. If I got onto a train and everyone was wearing it, I would, or if someone started really coughing and splattering, I'd, I'd pop it on. There we go. Oh. It's got the same. Um, it's got the same heads-up display. It's, it's just the same train, basically, isn't it? Inter Interior-wise, it's just. It's, yeah. yeah. It's really nice. They're just really nice trains. I yeah. I'm a big fan. I was kind of hoping. I wasn't sure what was going to actually happen. Whether they were going to end up being really nice trains, but I have to say, I'm quite quite impressed with this. And you think, like, I, I did a holiday around here, uh, near Yarmouth, in 2017, I want to say. Um, and I remember we had, we, we decided to do a day out to Norwich, so we went to Great Yarmouth Station, and it was 153. Yeah. And they'd ordered these, so we, we knew they were coming. Yeah. The 153 pulled in with a whole boatload of people going on to get out. It was, it was just horrible. Mm. Um, step up the customers in. Norfolk, Suffolk area have had, thanks to these trains, okay the reliability could be a little bit better, but I'm sure they'll get there. 
Oh yeah, that's a good point. What is there for like? Is it down on there? I think it's oh, I think it's now got to start off a bit shaky. Now they're okay. Um, I don't think. I'd say I think it's fair to say it's probably it's it's a point of improvement. Yeah. I'm sure that Stadler and um, Greater Anglia are working uh, working on this, and I wouldn't be surprised if the TFW variants, which are now being delivered on mass, I saw something Don Tall the other day. Um, if, if they'll probably learn the lessons, they okay. might be a bit more... A bit better. Well, they might work out the box a bit more, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but otherwise, I think they're... I think they're, they're, they're okay. I mean, as I said, we, 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 we're, we're going on the diesel. We, we're probably not going to get to go on it in electric mode, but it doesn't really matter because we've already been on the other one. I don't think there'll be so much it difference. Really matter, does it? But it's a massive step change. And imagine if you... The question is, for me, is like... This particular operator has delivered this type of really high quality train for what is a rural regional service, um, which during the winter when there's little tourism, and like this one here, it's going non stop to Yarmouth, it's fairly quiet. Yeah. Um, you know, this should be the standard, or well, this similar type of provision should be the, this should be the, the baseline. Standard. Yeah. You've got, I'm thinking places like you know, the Cumbrian Coast, Durham Coast, Settlement Carlisle. Um, Tyne Valley across the you know Newcastle to Carlisle. Yeah. But also, all the, you just look at all the suburban areas that were recently served by Paces and are now being served by the calves aren't great to be honest. They're, they're newer and they're, they're clearly they are an improvement on what was there before. But I'd say the difference in quality, which is an immediate obvious difference in quality between these and the calf, the, the northern calf units. Sorry, sorry calf, but uh, it's not. You can see the difference in quality. They just look the, the quality, the build quality in these. Is, we'll, we'll, we'll have a little plot around when we, um, as we, as kind of as we approach it, or maybe on the way back. Um, the, the, the quality, the build quality is much nicer. I mean, you saw it when we were in the bar car earlier. It's, everything's the finish on everything is much, much nicer, just much higher quality. I'm, I haven't managed to get on a calf apart from the one nine five. So I haven't got on the Westbins ones like the service. The TFW ones are approaching service readiness towards the end of this year. And those TFW ones are really crucial. They're going to replace 158s, which, apart, again, okay, they're really old and the air conditioning's rubbish, but like they've done a good service. And the 175s are actually really good. I, yeah, I, they're, 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 they're actually really good. I always like them. They're, like they're fine. Yeah. They're like an intercity spec as well. Yeah. Um, so the, the 197s have got big shoes to fill. And again, as it you know, raises that question, are they going to be as good as something like this? And, they get, and they're really important to get that right because they're serving the far end of West, like Southwest Wales and Pilsen is there, North Wales, which is really underserved. Yeah, really, and, really And really it's got served. worse, I think, in recent yeah. years. Conway Valley, Clundedno, Anglesey, needs good routes of connection to a really good fleet of trains. I'm not sure the 119 is great. Remain to be convinced, but... Yeah, we're remaining, at, well, I, I'm not remaining so open because I've seen, look, giant, look, uh, giant grain, grain stores, uh, you can't sugar. see them. Yeah. Oh, it's sugar. Oh, of course it is. It's British sugar. Cantley. Yeah, the home of the permanent way engineers. Cantley. Anyway, uh, it's a British sugar factory. Nice. Uh, that'll be beets. British sugar is beets, isn't it? Yeah. So I think they grow a lot around this part. Would make sense. Uh, yeah, anyway, sorry we digress. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not so convinced on the calves. I think they're, they're not good quality and, and they've, they've caused some headaches as well. But. I yeah, I'm not saying there should be a monopolisation of the of the rolling stock market. I'm just saying that this is the this is the base. This is this is where it should be at, and not nothing's getting nothing's reaching this level. I think the Hitachis are, in terms of build quality, they're they're a really nicely finished train. Like, they're good quality trains, definitely. Um, three eight five. Some ride issues. Three eight fives. Yeah, the three eight fives are really nice. Yeah, they're really nice. They are really really good. This this the, the, I think that's probably the the, 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 the best Hitachi train running at the moment is probably the three eight five. I think they're. They are really, really fetching, but um, yeah, I think this is what this loves to be. Quality, the, the the customer information system, you know, the customer information system is at, at, at or beyond the level that the the, the Siemens trains provide. And I think Siemens, again, Siemens build quality, the Thameslink trains, the 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 seven hundreds, the seven oh sevens are very good quality trains as well. They're they're, they're good, but they're they're a, they're a little Spartan again, thanks to the DFT. Seven oh sevens are a little bit. Because they were seven of were specced by SWR and the refurb, they're being refurbished into southeastern spec. Mm. And southeastern haven't actually done that much with them. Um, apart from making the interior a little bit more bland looking. I'm sorry, Steve. 
Uh, are they putting toilets into the 707s? That was a big thing on the fact that but going out to um, going out to Queenie's pad, uh, going to Windsor, uh, it was incredibly frustrating. We had a little one who needed the loo, and there was just no toilets. And it's actually there's also no toilets in any of the stations, so it's really difficult with a, with a six-year-old um, managing to deal with them dealing with an hour-long journey. It's just not good enough, you know, particularly a touristy route like Windsor, when you've got lots of kids going to Legoland. Oh, yeah, there needs to be toilets on that train. So I hope they're going to put toilets on the. Uh, that's, a, that's an expensive retrofit. So they. Those seven, those seven, I think they. I don't know. I haven't heard. I could be wrong. Um, I don't think they're going to do that, and I wonder if, if that, I maybe haven't heard of it, because they are, the reason that happened is because the, the Windsor lines aren't really a pure metro, Yeah. but they ended up doing those services in the South Western, on the South Eastern, they are doing pure metro services, they might justify not metro. Yeah, metro. that's true, that's true. We're now on the Burning Arms line, we've just veered off, Ooh. that's the lowest of flying curving we've done that, so we're now on the Burning Arms line. I've never been on this line. This is all, all of it, today, I, 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 once we got past, um, oh, where's the furthest I've gone? Once we got past kind of not even Shenfield, I've not even been as far out of Shenfield. So kind of once we were out beyond Witham, as uh, no, that's the other direction. In uh, Brentwood. Brentwood. No, where, I'm trying to think where the Crossrail had offices, and that was the first time they used to go. It might have been Gideon Park. Anyway, basically around this, there's sort of not much beyond the out of East London, and it's all new for me. So it's all very exciting. Do we want to see what the view looks like outside? It's flat. Um, <laughs> it's flat. Very nice, there we go. The world is so, flat. The world is flat. Um, right, that's what, what else have we done? What else have we covered? What else have we done? We had some fun in Norwich. We had, like, went to, saw some night the nice market, which is good. No, kind of, yeah, like Norwich montage has either done so, or been done. I suppose, I suppose, uh, as, as, as we were back on the joints of Trent, there we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. It, it, it's quite I've done this for a while. <laughs> the shotgun mic is wiggling. <laughs> it's a roller coaster, it really is. Um, so, at some point we're going to go past Burnie Arms, the most isolated station in Britain. Is it as isolated as Dummy Junction? I think, I think so. I think it's, it might even be. It will be certainly competing with it. There is no road access here. All there is is wetlands, the broads, cows. Lots of yeah, cows. cows. Also some wind. Yes, uh, windmills. They're, they're nice. They're, uh, uh, uh. Oh, there's some lots of cow, cow action. Much, there's much cow action. There you actually see. Let's go past those, they're very nice, lovely. So, somewhere near here is a pub, which may or may not have closed recently. And that's the only thing you can get to from Burnley Arms. You know, it's completely off the only transport here is the railway. And I love places like that, it's yeah. just a top good size. Anyway, um, one, one of the questions I think about is, is going into, into GBR world, my impression is that in terms of, I think what we would like would be the, the, the whole point of GBR and what the chat's plan was supposed to be all about, and the good points that we, we pulled out of it was that it was it break down the barriers between all the bits of the railway, acknowledging, acknowledging the fundamental point that the fragmentation of breaking up into bits of the railway has done us no favours for like a generation. Yep. And we all agree on that. So, one thing to bear in mind is that this plan to kind of make things better presumably work on the basis that you would, you would you know, block down some of these barriers. I don't see any evidence of that actually happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which means that if we're still in a world where we have operators, you know, bits of the railway working in silos, it means that we are going to find ourselves in a situation where when it comes to upgrades and lines, which may result in new rolling stock, because we have still we are still relying on for the best part of this decade, class 150s, 153s, all the 15 types. Yeah. We've relied on best burning arms. Um, we're relying on them. There's nothing. For, there's a pub there. That's it. Um, we're relying on. We're relying on, on these early 80s trains. These trains were like had done a fair few miles by the time that we were born, and they're still not going anywhere. So they have to be replaced at some point. Like this. Are we going to get something like this, or is it going to be a, a, again that kind of scattergun approach because we're still working in silos? Whereas, in my view, like Gareth says, we shouldn't be just going, oh, it's just we just one company, but we should be going, this is a, the spec, minimum spec. Yeah, yeah minimum spec. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm all for it. I'm kind of broadly all for a bit of monopolisation because if we've got a good quality train that works and is low floor, then maybe we should just buy you know, lots of these, build them, get, get, 
get them licensed out to the other manufacturers and do it that way. You know, I, I, it's, it's th this has to be the spec. You have to, you have to go. This is the minimum spec. Low floor. Uh, this level of quality, build quality, the reliability, which, as we said, kind of is, is, is improved a bit now. These. Uh, I don't know how loud this is, but we are definitely on clattery jointed track. It's good fun. On a single track jointed, this is, it's, probably, it's quite the contrast. We're, this is a rural railway, very yeah. much. It's just on a rural railway. Our little, our little, um, our little uh, shenanigans out from London. It's fun. What's interesting is there's a lot of industry over the south of the yeah. over here, which is quite interesting. I think the curve. I think that is Yarmouth. Oh yeah. I think we're going to slow curve around. around. Just definitely like we are currently below sea level. Yes. Just you know, that's a levee. That there is a levee, and we are below sea level, which is kind of strange. You can see the sea just just in the middle. Of. There's another another windmill here, which is quite nice. Yeah. Let's go past that. It's very uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. We're here in this is lovely uh, Great Yarmouth, by the way, which we'll go and have a look at in a minute. What we're going to do is, is the, the front of the train facing that way, very nice, the, facing out. You'll notice that this is quite a curvy platform, and I just put some B-roll in, showing as much. Um, down here is the uh, is the step. There's a bit of a step down, so if I come down... Firstly, I'm trod treading on the, the step, which is fine. But uh, if I come down here, you can see there's quite a... There's quite a, a kind of a dent where the where the step is, but it's not bad. While we're in here... Uh... It's alright, this is quite a smart looking, uh, smart looking interior train. The build quality, everything just, it just is very smart. The finish, of the actual train finish, is really good quality. Everything just feels nice, it's very smart. Uh, the, the, the customer information system is very good. It's, it's impressive well, I even like, I even like here, like this, this finish on the door. It is nice, it's just it's the bright nice red. Shiny. It's just nice. It's just smart, they're just well put together trains. Right, let's get off this before it drags us uh, unwittingly <laughs> back, back, back the way we've come. Uh, let's go and have a look at Yarmouth Station, shall we? We're approaching the, the, thun the thrash cupboard. Here it is. That's, that's the thing that makes it go. The clever idea that makes this low floor train work. And the thing that puts all other train manufacturers to shame. Because <laughs> you don't have an underfloor rumble. And also, I mean, obviously we love the OLE. We've got a lovely pantograph just up there on the roof. Uh, yeah. up my head, there Proper railway. And uh, you can, hopefully, you know, we're not... You know, we obviously, electrification is a priority. It just makes sense. But where it doesn't make sense, which is those very small particular examples, uh, we might, we might get um, battery technology, which can slot in there. Slot it in. And then you take out the, the, the explodey dinosaur diesel engine, and you've got a whole electric train where you use the wires where there are the wires, and you use the battery where there's the battery. This, it's, it's, it's here, it works, it's reliable, it's good. Another thing I want to talk about that Simon and I were talking about earlier, the exterior, this, th this looks so um, mainland European, just having a big cycling sticker and the nice green thing up top. Um, we were talking about this earlier. This should just be the standard on all, all trains. Yes. That should just all trains should look like that. And, and the, this is why where the idea of like I know we talked about how I think the branding of trains should be. One of the things that should be, uh, even if it's like in, using the Welsh, you know, the the tra the uh, transport Cymru glyph, it should still be giant white bicycle on the wind of the bicycle area like this. Um, I just think same it looks smart. For, same for uh, wheelchair access. Yeah. Um, because yeah, we've got the level boarding, but then obviously those facilities that that those who are have less ability in particular could use. So, just a consistent approach across yeah. the whole railway with minor variations, as you say. Because what is one of the worst ways of a disencouraging people, if that's a word, and b of just confusing people? Like people arrive at Gatwick Airport or whatever on mass from other countries who are going to be grappling with a weird system. They're going to buy a ticket, which we all know is just. A horror. Yeah. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And then you go to the train. You go. Well, where do I put luggage? What do I do? If you have a consistent approach with those local variations, brilliant. Exactly. Yes. Here it is. Yeah. Nice.
Very smart. They look great. I think the, the Great Wrangler livery is actually really nice. It looks quite mainland European generally. There's the Stadler in nice blue there. They look smart. They didn't want to put the yellow on, but I believe there's semi level crossings there to risk successful. They just decided to put the panel on. Which is I why think the TSW looks, ones don't have them. I think it looks smart. It's the last thing that unifies them all. Uh, there's a, a weird release point ground frame thing that, uh, that's, that's there. Lovely blue. Lovely blue. Uh, and also these buffers, hopeless. Absolute disaster. They get zero stars. Uh, but there's, there's a nice train behind us. Look at that. There it is. Beautiful. Thanks, Great Anglia. Thanks, Stadler, for giving us a fantastic little train. Interesting tidbit. So, this, so there's a taxi. There's one of these for taxis in York Station in the new RA2 branding. And I was a bit like, it's a bit weird, but this is a BR era one <laughs> doing a similar thing. Uh, so it's kind of strange to see it. So yeah. Also, that's the loo. You can hear the. the... We're going to go and look at a sand, a stan, a, a, a sandler, stand, I don't know. What's Just really funny look, look at this. It's a sand. That's really good. That's quite good, isn't it? Look at that. I like how it's receding into the distance as well as you, as yeah. you, as you look at it. Which is quite <laughs> and it's got the it's got the great angle of hair. It's got the hair. I don't know if you heard about Clyde the tortoise the other the other day who caused havoc on on these lines. Yes. Got hit by uh, by one of these Stadlers, but survived. Well done, well done, Clyde. Don't go on the track, Clyde. But um, stay off the tracks, Clive and kids. Uh, there got, we go. Here, got, that's a one era disabled toilet with some VR signage and one signage again. It's just. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. One that kind of BR, sorry, <laughs> that's one. It's whole, a whole mix of stuff. Chaos. Anyway, right, that's enough from us. We're gonna, um, uh, it looks quite good from the, the, the sand train, that's quite good from here. Uh, so usually let's go watch the train leave. Usually, the sand trains are ones that are carrying 1500 tons of opium. <laughs> Roundup time. What? So what? What? You know, what we've, what we've done today. We have. We started off on Liverpool Street. We we looked at the mucky roof. We looked at Jacobs bogies versus regular bogies. We generally looked at some trains. Hopped on to. Uh, hopped on to one of these actually. Twelfth car seven four five. Headed to Norwich. We chatted about all sorts at that point. We had a, a good old gab. Uh, and we ended up in Norwich. That was, that was, that was good. We, we went for a little exploring Norwich. Good food. Oh, we had good food. Yeah, I don't know. We 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 that'll be smooshed into the montage. But we had uh, stumbled. We stumbled upon <laughs> a really nice food market next to the what I presume was the city hall in um, in Norwich. That was really nice. And we went to look at the old Victoria Station. That we did that. So there, there wasn't much there. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, saw the bridge. Uh, walked over on, on a kind of a weavy weavy wibbly route to get back to the the, the only extant station. And made our way to uh, the rather bleak-looking Yarmouth remains of what was once a, probably a grander station at uh, Great Yarmouth. Um, 
and then we hopped back and came back and are on this thing. Um, so what, what is our verdict? We, we've, we set out to, uh, to answer the question, are the Stadlers the finest trains operating in GB at the moment? And I have to say, I mean yes, I, I think they are. They're, also, they're, they're certainly the baseline upon which to measure everything else. And I think we, we are, there are a couple of new big train orders out. Scott Rail has got one on order. Um, but there are some other orders. LNER, weirdly, have got an order out for new, new rolling stock. Um, and it's interesting to see the fact that the discussions about new rolling stock in, for example, Scotland, are about a, are looking at level boarding solutions. They're not necessarily looking at low floor, but they are considering that level boarding is a, ne a necessity in new rolling stock. So, in a way, the discussion has changed on that. The Stadler have, have changed it. The Triple Sevens have changed it. So, Mersey Rail have really led the way on that one. It has to be said. Um, Siemens, interesting. They had a chat, chat with Siemens, who were uh, talking about level boarding. The fact they, they they know they're introducing a new. There's some very good factories over there. That's nice. You can't see them. For us. Um, Siemens are introducing a new train platform. Onto, as in not train yeah, no as in station platform, but train as in the type, a bit like the Aventro uh, Star is a train platform, um, into the UK and they will have level boarding. Whether it's low floor or not is to be decided, but... Um, How would you do level boarding without low floor? By providing an auto ramp solution on the train. So it'll be a, a, an auto ramp is that, that what self friend, deploy. is that what our friend John Worth calls a lift? No, else? no, I don't. Th no, it's not one of the ones that comes out and drops down and up. No, it, it'll be a thing that goes. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. To, uh, for me, low floor is better because you get a. Firstly, you have more space in the cabin. It's it's, it's a more pleasant experience. Um, but you, it means that every it does. It means that you don't it, it deploy just ramps at the disabled access. It, everyone has level boarding, and it also pushes the onus back a bit onto infrastructure to provide the full system. But anyway, so level boarding. Um, is, is, so level boarding is great. We've seen a few nice videos of level boarding in action, but um, but there's a lot more to these trains I think as well. They're just very smart, they're high quality, they have a feeling of, of, of being decent quality, well built trains. They're, they're long, they're huge, they feel big, which is what you want in a long distance train. You want to feel like you've got plenty of space, um, even though the, the one this morning was round, wasn't it? Absolutely yeah, round, but even, really even, even then it was... You know, so comfortable. The, the, yeah, and you got the things are fairly high back, but it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like you're like, like random and like people. We've also been in these seats for hours now and quite comfortable. Oh, like no it. problem. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so yeah. So um, I I think they are. If we're gonna if we're gonna conclude, my my view is yeah they are the best. This is the best fleet. You know, the, the the whole Stadler fleet. Oh, the one five three still there. The whole Stadler fleet is the best. Um, Best, they're the best passenger trains running in the UK at the moment, uh, in GB at the moment. A lot, probably also for Northern Ireland, the best trains. What do you think, Sam? What are your thoughts? Yeah, you mean more think, diplomatic or? Um, well, I think, I think, yeah, I could be more diplomatic in the sense of, okay, it's probably a fair point to say that these are, you, you know, we shouldn't compare them to say the dusty bin which is sitting over there and that are doing the Harwich, the Harwich fly. Welcome to this service. Um, fair enough. Okay, we, we won't compare it with a. You know, a, a pre primer station train, stuff. maybe not even a pre kind of you know 2000s 21st century type type train. So if we compare it with what was coming out now, I mean this operator, we're on Greater Anglia today. Hi Greater Anglia. Um, Hi folks. You know we're on we're on a operator who has got this fleet sat alongside a commuter fleet, which is from the uh, Electro or Aventro. Aventro the, the, stars. Yeah, they're Aventro stars. Um, oh, yeah. That that platform. And on that basis, they, they've taken the high floor, it's that standard kind of thing. So, you, so that's, I think, a very fair comparison. Which train do I prefer to be in? This one. Yeah. It's just a much nicer experience. Even though we've discussed before about, you know, okay, you, you could probably get a lot of, more, a better feel in those trains if you rip that horrible third seat out and maybe take this <laughs> yeah. two and all that good stuff. But in terms of other trains running around, I think these probably are the best. I'd be very happy if these were. Something like this should be running on like the Trans Pennine between Liverpool and York and Scarborough and, and Hull, places like that. Um, yeah, I think I think this has set a new benchmark, and anything that doesn't hit this benchmark going forward is a, is, is is definitely a failure. We we've got so what in city fleets have we got coming up? Uh, we're about to. I'll let the I'll let the announcement finish. Colchester, Chelmsford, Stratford, 
and London Liverpool Street. Um, the remaining there's there's, there's some the fleet. Stop will be Colchester. Colchester. EMR, their new fleet is coming along, so it'll be interesting to compare these versus the East Midlands Railway fleet. And um, and cross country at some point need a new fleet. They've always just knackered and they need put in the bin. There's nothing been bid for them yet. Has there? No plan at all for them. It's cross country. There's never a plan for cross country. I would love to see these trains. This ideally this length of train, but certainly as long. I'm going to do it. There will be a cross country episode where we look at I look at the infrastructure and see what the longest train they could run is. Um, and uh, they, I think it should be these. You could presumably do something like this with in the middle some power packs. Maybe not a couple of them. You could, yeah, you could have them distributed, you could have a one, one at one end, and you could have one in the middle of one six and one in the middle of the other six, or one in the middle of one ten and one in the middle of the other ten. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think, yeah, but certainly this is the benchmark. In terms of quality, this is the benchmark. Um, we've got very lost sun. The sun's gone very dark because the sun is moving around. Anyway, um, so, as ever, this is, uh, this will, will, will come back to us. Our faces have now disappeared and have been replaced by a stripy image. Uh, as ever, this, this uh, rail matter is available in in audio only format. This probably worked quite nicely in audio only format actually. This is a bit of a chat. Sound effects. I put some face for radio, so that works. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, um, uh, as ever, you can support this happening more, particularly this sort of adventure, on um, on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Gareth Dennis. Um, and uh, the merch is still a, a, a TBC. PayPal.me slash Gareth Dennis for uh, throwing abuse at me or lose change, uh, your choice. And the Discord server, uh, GaffThenis.uk slash Discord for where the chat that has been happening, hello everyone in the chat, has been happening right now. Well, more of that can happen on the Discord. Ad infinitum. Yeah, um, next week's episode, uh, I'm sure, uh, future Gareth, what, what is it going to be? Thank you, past Gareth. Next week's episode will be, uh, it's episode 129, and it will be not quite 10 of Mainland Europe's missing high-speed rail links. Uh, should be quite an interesting one. Uh, I have recorded it. I can confirm it is, in fact, a very interesting one. Uh, with John Stone. Uh, so that should be good. Back to you, Gareth from the past. We'll find it. Thank you, future Gareth. I'm sure that would be very interesting and exciting and, and a riveting episode of Real Matter, whatever it might be. Um, everyone. Uh, it only really remains for us to so thank Simon for being my guide on our adventure around East Anglia. Pleasure. Thanks, thanks for Greater Anglia. We've been unorganised. You don't know we've been doing this, but we've been ro roaring around on your trains and, 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 and being mean about them. Actually, no, we've been very, very nice about them, in fact. Um, and uh, thanks to all of you watching. We will see you next week. Well, no, Simon will. Simon might be in the chat. Be oh, the chat. hopefully we'll might be in the chat in this one. I might be. Uh, it depends on when it comes out and what yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right, anyone. Cheerio! Oh.